Welcome back. Uh, today I want to talk about one of the greatest features of Avid's Pro Tools, which is playlist editing. Um, I would also recommend you check out the channel of Kato Zane. I frequently watch her channel and she has a ton of really useful content on there, uh, all things regarding um, audio post-production. So she knows way more about this than I do. But um, it's a process that I had to learn being an assistant, but also for myself. Um, when you get sessions back from a scoring stage, you generally want to make sure that you can edit the takes. This isn't always done by the composer or the assistant. This can be done at the stage. If you book a high-end stage, they will do this for you. Usually the Pro Tools operator will also drop in the take that you liked the most if you were if you communicate that. Um, this is also why we take session notes so that we know which takes we liked and which ones we didn't like. Um, so let's assume they didn't do the take edits at the stage and you get Pro Tools sessions back. So what do you do? Um, so if you look at the session, this is from the Klaus family. And so what you see here is the session prep that I did for this for this queue. I have a different video about that if you want to check that out, Pro Tools session prep. But so this is what the stage got from me and that's kind of always what it looks like when I prep it. Um, and then if you scroll down, you can see where they recorded. This session only has strings in it, so you don't even have to worry about all the other sections because otherwise the session would be exponentially bigger. But so you can see here in the group's main pass, overdub one, overdub two, overdub three. This is their template. Overdubs mean that I wrote something, it's very common in film music, that you have a main pass and then maybe you have a couple of spots where they played harmonics, but they can't, you know, do that at the same time or you want to, you know, do a separate recording of that so you don't have to DVC the orchestra or you want to do a separate pass of that just so you can have control, volume control over that. You know, sometimes you just do different passes of different things. You know, sometimes you have an ostinato going while the rest of the strings is playing sustains. Um, this isn't concert music, so you can do whatever you want and we'll record it in a way that gives us full control over the different elements. So that's what we did here. So this is the main pass. You can see the close mics and, and overheads for the sections, then the deca tree, left, center, right, the outriggers, which are placed left and right to the deca tree. They're just much wider. Um, surround left and right, stereo left and right, and a ref, uh, a ref mix, which they always give you. Um, it's kind of a mix down of their console live mix. Uh, it just makes it easier to do the take edits because you can just listen to this instead of listening to, you know, the different mic positions that are unmixed and it doesn't sound great. So then you have this overdub pass, which is just this part. Um, I remember this is harmonics, so we recorded those separately. And overdub two and three are muted because we did not have that in this cue. I normally just write for a maximum of one overdub two overdubs is too messy for my taste. But so these are grouped up. So if I solo this, these all belong together. This was one pass. And then these all belong together. And you can also disable the groups if you just wanna solo individual tracks. But for the purposes of this, that's not actually desirable. So what do we do? You can see this cue was recorded in chunks. If we had it done in a different location, they might have recorded in longer sections. I would think if we had done this in London, it would have been three parts because the queue is kind of divided into three parts. But so in Macedonia, they decided to break it up further and do um, rehearsals and stuff. So that's fine. Um, it doesn't really matter for the sake of this queue. So say I want to now decide which take do I like the best because usually we do at least three takes. I will have my take notes on my Google Sheet and I want to listen through it with the mock-up on to see which one blends best or if I still agree with what I liked best during the recording just to double check before it goes to the mixing engineer because uh, he's going to be concerned with mixing not with editing. 
I mean, he can always drop in a take if I want that. If I hear something, I'm like, ah, oh, can we use a different take for this? Like, he will know how to do that. But, um, you know, ideally, the mixing engineer gets a session that is clean. Unless you, of course, you can always pay them for their time to do the editing as well. Especially if you're with them in the room, you can do it together. But, you know, mind you, that's extra cost, of course. So... What I will do is, here you can see, um, we currently have waveform selected, which makes sense. Um, but so what we want now is this beautiful function called playlists. And this will open all the takes. You have similar functions in Cubase and Logic where um, it's called comping. And it's great, but it's not this magnitude. So you can see this is the first part. Let's scroll down to the stereo ref just so we can use that. Because that's what I normally would do. I would comp with the stereo ref on and not with everything else. Jesus. This is just madness. Surround stereo ref mix. There we go. So I would normally just play back through you know, this first part right here. Um, and then if I, if I want to know which take we're hearing right now, you can see it in the naming, uh, ref mix for four, that's this one. So the last take we put into the target playlist, that's what this is called, the main pass. Uh, you can see that here, main playlist. If you wanted to choose a different target playlist, you could enable this little blue square, but we don't want that because we already have a main target playlist already. This is normally how they deliver from the scoring stage, so you don't have to enable a different target playlist unless you really want to for some reason. So this is take four we're hearing right now, but say I want to hear the first take. So then you can solo this and you will still hear everything else playing, but now you will hear the first take of, um, of this part. And you can also solo the second right there and listen to the third and then decide. And you know what? Maybe I said, you know what? Third take for this one is better. I want that. Then you can click on this little arrow and you can see right now we're listening to take three and not to take four. So once I've decided this, you can go into the next section and make the same choice. Solo the different takes, pick which one you want. Say I liked take 11 better than take 12, then we can put that up there. And same thing with this. I don't know why we recorded that separately. Maybe I like take 15 the best. Play through it, figure out which one you like, Boom, put take 15 up there. Then, you know, this part. Who knows? Maybe I like the first take the most. Unlikely. Usually the first take is kind of the rehearsal take. We always record it, but it's usually not the one to go unless it was like a, a money take. You know, drop that up there. So now you only have the issue that the, um, the transitions are, of course, not clean. So normally you would then go in and like, you know, create fades. Um, this one looks like, should be like that. And create crossfade. It also has a really nice um, equal power uh, and equal gain crossfades. There you go. I mean, you'd have to listen to it to see that the crossfade is clean, of course. Same here. It's going to be something like this. There we go. You know, who knows? You can always listen back to it, adjust the crossfade accordingly, and so forth. I don't know where this is supposed to end. Probably like this. Okay. And so ideally by the end of it, you have a very clean playthrough of what you wanted. Um, now here's the magic. Since these are all grouped together as one, everything you just did in the reference mix was also done 
to the individual mic positions. Same crossfades, same take selection, everything to all the mic positions. So if I go now go back into the waveform, which is what the mixing engineer would be seeing, there you go. All the mics were treated exactly the same way. Can you imagine having to do that individually? That's That would be madness. And so the mixing engineer would then get something like this, something cleaned up with the right take edits made with the right mic positions, uh, the, the right takes selected in the target playlist. Um, the takes normally also selected that blend the best with a mock-up, um, which aren't always the best standalone takes, which is interesting, but you know, whatever works best for the final product. And then you do the same thing with the overdub. And normally, if this had brass in it, you would have the same kind of setup below this for brass and for woodwinds and sometimes percussion or choir. And you'd have to do all of that again for those instruments as well. So you can see how much work that is and why session notes are kind of important. Um, so you ha can walk through it faster and you can have other people helping you do this because, you know, I'm not always the person doing this. Um, this is very often done by someone else. So they need the take notes to see where I said I like this take. But yeah, that's the whole magic to it. And it's really quite amazing. It seems simple, but I don't know if other DAWs have this. Um, definitely a skill you're going to need as an assistant. Definitely a skill you need as the lead composer. Um, so yeah, this is really quite amazing. And um, I don't mess with any of the mic positions themselves. I just leave it because I don't really know what to do with them, to be honest. I don't I don't mix this, you know, um, and I, I doubt the mixing engineer would want you to mess with these because, you know, that's not, that's not your job. <laughs> let, let the pros do this. They know what to do with all these mic positions. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the whole magic to it. Nothing else to it. It's super, super simple. Um, again, if you check out Kato Zane's channel, she has different ways of doing this as well. To me, this seems like the most straightforward. Um, but then again, I'm not a Pro Tools wizard. I just use it occasionally when I need it for recording and for mixing. So, um, you know, maybe there are cooler ways to do it. I think she showcases like three different ways of doing it. So um, it's very cool. Check out her channel. It's super, super useful. I hope this was helpful. I hope I didn't forget anything in this. Um, but yeah, this is a useful skill to have. So if you ever can get your hands on Pro Tools and playlists and do some playlist editing, I would highly encourage that because it's a really marvelous feature that I actually very much enjoy because it's so intuitive.